Welcome to part 6 of the Ray Marching Shader in Unity tutorial by Pearplay. In the previous part we've applied the Ray Marching Shader to the scene view. In this part I will introduce you to the basics of the Sign Distance field. At the end of this part we will have made the scene you see in this introduction. Creating these free tutorials takes a lot of time and effort and I couldn't have created these without the support of all the amazing patrons at my Patreon. If you find the contents of my tutorials helpful, consider supporting me at Patreon. In doing so, you not only support me creating these, but you get access to the source files, exclusive tutorials and extra content. Special thanks to MR, Andrew LeBoy, Devin the Dude, Derek Vechter and Patrick Nugent. This will be the most fun part of the tutorial. Now that we've made the ray marching shader appear in the scene view and calculated some basic lighting, we will start working on creating some more complex scenes using the sign distance field. Instead of writing all our sign distance field functions in the shader, we will write them in a CG include file to keep our shader short and easy to read. In the description of this video or by following the link that should pop up now, you can find a link to download the distance field functions.cg include script. Add this file to the same folder as the Raymart shader in the assets folder. Let's add a reference to the distance functions in the shader. So let's open up the shader. We're going to include the distance functions as well. So underneath the include unity CG, we're going to type include distance functions dot CG include. Let's have a look at the distance functions dot CG include. In this file, I included the sphere and the box primitive sign distance functions. Both names start with SD, which stands for Sign Distance, followed by the name of the object. I also included three different Boolean operators that you can use to combine, subtract and intersect different primitives with each other. Lastly, I added a mod position function to be able to repeat the distance field along an axis. Now let's head over to the Raymart shader to remove the SD sphere function that we created earlier. So let's scroll down. And we've got the SD sphere function here and let's delete that because it's already included in the CG include. Now before we start working on the distance field, let's make a color property so we can change the color of the ray marching result in the Unity editor. So let's scroll to the top and we're going to create a uniform fixed for and we'll call this the main color. Now let's scroll down to the ray marching where we apply the color, which is here, the fixed tree that we've created here. And we're going to replace this with the main color dot RGB. Now let's save the shader and go to the Raymarch camera. And we're going to add a property of a color. So underneath the max distance, we're going to create a public color and we'll call this main color. And we're going to assign the main color to the Raymarch material. So we're going to talk to the Raymarch material dot set color. And we're going to set the main color to become this variable main color. Now save the script and go back to Unity. Now we see a slot for the main color and we can select any color to change the color of the array marching result. So let's set it to blue. Let's remove the cube game object and we're going to create a cube or in other words, a box to the distance field of the shader. So let's open up the shader again. In the distance field function, we're going to add a new line for the box. So let's create a float and we'll call this box one. And that is going to be as the box. Now the box requires two different parameters. The first parameter is its position. So we'll say P minus a flow three, and we'll set it at the center. So zero, zero, zero. And the second parameter is a flow three for its X, Y, and Z scale. So we'll say a flow three, and let's set its scale to three, two, four, or five, four. Now at this point we're returning the sphere, so let's return just the box. Now let's save the shader and go back to Unity. At this point the distance field returns just the box and we want to show the box and the sphere. Remember that any negative output value is a hit and positive values are empty space. 
To return both primitives, we use the min operator, which will return the smallest float of the two parameters. So instead of just returning the box, we're going to use the min operator. And in here, we'll get two different floats. So we'll get the sphere one and the box one. Now let's save the shader and go back to Unity. And now we see the sphere and the box visualized in the shader. And we can increase the scale of the sphere, of course. Now let's create a public parameter in the inspector for the box, just as we did with the sphere. So let's go back to the shader and we're going to add a float for for the box one. So box one. And we'll add this box one in the equation. So instead of the flow three, we're going to return the box one dot x, y, z. And for the scale, we're going to just return a box with the same values for its x, y, and z component. So we can say underscore box one dot www. Now let's save the shader and go to the Raymarch camera. And we're going to add a vector four for the box one. So box one, and we're going to send this box one to the shader. So let's say Raymarch material dot set factor. And we're going to set the factor of box one to the box one vector four. Now save this and go back to unity. We now see just the sphere because the box parameters are still set at zero. But if we increase the W size, then we can see a perfect box appearing. Now let's have a look at the different Boolean operators. So let's open up the shader. And we've actually already done one of the Boolean operators. Because if we go to the distance functions, you can see that the union is just a return of the minimum value of the first and second float value. So we've just written the union Boolean operator. So let's now have a look at the subtraction operator, which is called the OPS. So in the Raymart shader, we're going to change the min to OPS. The logic here is that the minus values return a volume. So if we invert the result of the first parameter, in this case, a sphere, all the space within the sphere becomes empty space. The second parameter, the box, is not inverted. We return the highest number of both equations. So basically everywhere that the sphere overlaps the box, the result becomes a value above zero, which results in empty space. So let's save the shader and check out the result in Unity. Back in Unity, we get this amazing result. The sphere cuts away from the volume of the box. By combining different operators to primitives, you can build complex scenes in no time. And you can play around by adjusting the location of the sphere, for example. So if I put it to the edge of the box, Let's put it over here, put it a little bit up, get some pretty cool results. Now, of course, we can also do the opposite of this operator. So let's now subtract the box from the sphere. So we'll say box one from sphere one. Let's save this. And now in the result, you'll see that the box is subtracted from the sphere volume. Now let's have a look at the intersection operator. This returns the maximum value of both primitives. So only where the volumes have overlap, they will be shown. So in the Raymart shader, we're going to change OPS to OPI. Let's save the shader, go back to Unity. And now you can see that only the space that covers the box and the sphere are being returned. Now to create the result of the introduction of this video, we're going to change this back to OPS. And we're going to subtract the sphere one from the box one. Now let's set both positions to zero. We're going to set the box at a scale of two. And we're going to set the sphere at a scale of 2.5. Now the next step is to duplicate this equation infinitely into its x, y, and z directions. We can do this by using the fmod in the shader. You'll notice that the first input parameter has an in-out for the position. This means that changes made to the variable that is sent to this parameter of the function will be applied to the variable that has been sent. 
we will send the current position P and the F mode will repeat the values by the interval of size. The cool thing of this function is that the shader only has to calculate the box and the sphere one time and can then repeat this infinitely at almost no cost for performance. So let's implement this P mode 1 in the shader. The order in which you write the distance field matters, so above the sphere and the box we will instruct the distance field to repeat its results in different axes. Let's start by the X axis. Let's create a float and we're going to call this mod X and that is going to be P mod 1 and the first parameter is the in out parameter so we're going to set the P dot X for the second parameter we're going to set the interval for the X axis and for now we're going to set this to 4 now let's save the shader and go back to unity now you see that the equation is repeated into its X axis into infinity and of course it's not infinity because it's also taking the max distance so you can set the max distance higher or lower to calculate more or less of the object. Now if we change any of these parameters you can see that the change is applied to all the duplications. Now let's do the same for the y and the z axis and create a public vector 3 to set the interval in the inspector. So let's go to the shader and we're going to the top and we're going to create a new float 3 so uniform float 3 and let's call this the mod interval now let's scroll down to the distance field and instead of 4 we're going to use the mod interval dot x let's copy paste this line two times and we're going to create a mod y a mod Z and for this we'll change the Y position Y Z and Z now let's save the shader and go to the Raymarch camera and we're going to add a vector 3 so a public vector 3 and we'll call this the mod interval and let's now send the mod interval to the shader. So we'll say raymarch material dot z vector. And we're going to set the vector mod interval to become mod interval. Now save this and go back to Unity. Now back in Unity, everything is black because we are repeating a zero point into infinity. So we need to set this value to something higher. So let's set it to 4, 4, and 4. And now with this infinite space of ray marching results, we can also add a game object to the scene and place that somewhere inside of the volume. And we can use this to create some very cool games. And because we made all the variables in the inspector, we can also just change the variables around and see what results we get by changing these parameters. This was a very basic introduction into the sign distance field. The possibilities are endless, but I hope that you are inspired by this to play around with the distance field to create some cool scenes. An extensive list of functions for the distance field is available at the website of Iniquo Quillis, in which you can learn to apply more primitives, smooth operators, rotations, mirroring and deformations like displacement, twisting and bending. There are many more things to learn and in the next part I will teach you how to support different colors and materials in the same shader. Thank you for following this part. If you found this tutorial helpful, feel free to share this video with your peers. To stay updated to new released parts, subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on. Happy coding!